Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto and bringing out a bite-sized pieces today. It's a pretty good day if you're a Cardano holder or looking to get into Cardano. First, we're going to talk about a little snippet where we talk about the world health and how it all uh, disseminates throughout the entire globe. We're going to take a look at the, the Cardano Virtual Summit and what has been uh, the announcements thus far. We're going to talk about 20 million new customers coming in into Cardano. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the digital ID program or platform, Atala Prism. So let's just uh, jump right in, shall we? And just take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is Sunday. And of course, Sundays <clears throat> usually are pretty good days. Mondays are pretty much uh, uh, the big dips, and here we have $1.93 trillion. So uh, we're below $2 trillion, hoping to get back there, but I don't see that happening. Again, September is a pretty bumpy month, so just strap in, because uh, if you like dips, you're going to love September. Uh, Bitcoin price is uh, 43000 and then everything that's been going on as far as like Cardano and all the different uh, announcements, all the great news. Cardano is down a whopping 5%. Well, that makes no sense, but so does the entire market. Uh, Ethereum is up though, 5.67% uh, for whatever reason. And uh, that is Ethereum, that is Bitcoin. Although I will say this, uh, Ethereum, the uh, actual reserves on the exchanges has been going down precipitously. I mean, it's really just dropping like crazy. Ethereum, the actual uh, token or, or the cryptocurrency just, just being wiped away. And there is so much demand, thanks to NFTs, thanks to DeFi, that uh, I think Ethereum is going to go up uh, at some point pretty quickly. Uh, everything is down. Binance Coin, XRP is up a little bit. Yay. Uniswap is up 25%. And then also, I think Aave is also up. And uh, another one, not Quant, but... Uh, <clears throat> Huobi is down. And uh, what's going on is that, uh, I think it's Huobi, it's the uh, uh, one of the exchanges that said that they are going to phase out uh, all, all Chinese traders. And so all the Chinese traders said, okay, well, fine. Well, we know it's illegal because that's what the government says. What we're going to do is just going to put all our money into DEXs and start trading that way because people want to be in a cryptocurrency and they're going to find a way if you give them away. And that's why Uniswap is up, Aave is up, and PancakeSwap, I think, is up a little bit uh, somewhere. And uh, all the different swaps are, are up a little bit or if not flat as opposed to being uh, negative. So that's what's going on in the market in a nutshell. Let's take a look at a couple of things. First, what I want to talk about real quick is <clears throat> getting scammed. And uh, this was brought to my attention this morning. And uh, it was from Erna. And she says, please forgive me if I'm writing in a wrong place, but it seems I've just lost my ETH. The Telegram is the official arbitrage channel. Is this Dan's true channel? It's fake. And I said, hey, this is fake. And I said, you've lost everything or you've lost whatever you sent over there. I said, how much did you lose? She said, I lost 1.15 ETH. 1.15 ETH, okay? That's pretty ridiculous. That's a good $3,000 down the, down the tube just because of a scammer. So I took a look and this was some that I had already uh, confronted this, this scammer on August. And I used some pretty choice words. And if you're not an adult, well, you shouldn't be on this channel because this channel isn't made for kids. And that's what I said. And uh, not too happy about that. And what I had to do was I had to go to Telegram, their anti-scam, a note to scam. And I reported this person and their handle on Telegram is at Digital Asset News Trades. Let me blow that up so you can see that. Uh, at, let me put this down. At, ah, there we go. At Digital Asset News Trade. So if you're on Telegram and you want to disrupt somebody's life, uh, go over there to add Digital Asset News Trades because that is a scammer, as a person who maliciously takes money from our community uh, for their own personal gains. And I would like you to reach out to them and tell them what you think and also to report them to anti-scam, whatever you want to do. Anyhow, that's, what's, uh, that's that piece. Let's go to break into our top story. So as far as like, I just want to start with this, world wealth. And we take a look at the actual wealth in the uh, in the entire globe. It's uh, it's pretty centralized on the top. I gotta be, I gotta admit. And this was from Vox. And um, if you're looking at people that make over a million or net worth over a million, they hold 142 trillion dollars as far as as far as the wealth. And that is 44.8 percent of the entire wealth in the globe is uh, by millionaires. Billionaires uh, has a higher concentration, but uh, not as much. And uh, that is just 1% of the 
essentially of uh, the population. Now, if you make uh, 100,000 to 1 million uh, in, the, in the globe, you're carrying around 124 trillion, which is about 40%, 39% of the global population. Between, if you make 10,000 to 100,000, as far as your net worth, you hold 44 trillion, and you're, you're about 14%. And then down here, which is the most amount of people, as far as the population, 63% which make less than $10,000 in, uh, as far as net worth, hold only $6.2 trillion. Now, why did I bring this to your attention? Well, I brought this to your attention because Cardano is working pretty much with this entire pyramid. They haven't just left out the people down here. They have definitely haven't let, uh, left out the people up here because I think that's some of you that are watching this uh, channel right now. And they're kind of going for everything. And this is what I'm talking about. This was a, a tweet uh, this was from uh, uh, Alexandra Huck. If you uh, haven't followed her, she's big into crypto and uh, most most notably Cardano. And she just lays out like this. This is what's been going on in the summit itself. Uh, Dish or digital IDs on Boost's mobile network. And of course, for this one, just so you know, uh, this one, um, it's got, as far as like Dish network, I know some people say, who uses Dish? I use Dish. A lot of people use Dish. And it's about 10 million people uh, throughout, uh, as far as like customers and then boost mobile. Well, who's in boost mobile about 9 million people. So it's, I mean, really, if you add them together, it's almost 19, 20 million new customers, depending on, on, uh, which data points that you look at. She talks about, uh, also that was, uh, announced chain link. Uh, there's an integration oracles for real-time market data. And those are the two big things, but then there's like some things that get overlooked, like rival esports, uh, agnostic NFT marketplace, fan rewards, and then. Uh, acuant, I think it's how you say it, acuant fraud prevention, and then Cody and Ardana stablecoin crypto to fiat payments. And I think, of course, this one, I couldn't really verify the Cody and, and, and uh, Adrana. I think that's uh, true. But this one here, <clears throat> acuant uh, fraud prevention. Uh, this one, it is, uh, is pretty big. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But first, I want to talk about how uh, the dish as far as like uh, with uh, digital IDs on Boost, just so you know, Dish Network, again, I am one of those customers. Uh, and uh, just so you know, Dish and Amazon Web Service form a strategic collaboration to reinvent 5G connectivity innovation. Why was Dish to deal with that? Because they took over Boost Mobile and they're going to work with Amazon now and they're going to partner up. They're going to do all these great innovation projects. And guess who they partnered up with as well? Cardano. So when we take a look at, and we put these pieces together, this could be something pretty darn big. On top of the fact, this one, a Qant, as far as she says, fraud prevention, and it is, but it's also this. A Qant is privacy progressed. A Qant's trust identity platform puts the power of identity in your hands for verification. And this right here, right here, AML and KYC, anti-money laundering, and KYC know your customers. Why would this be so important right now? Well, as you can see, Super Gary, Gary Gensler over at the SEC is trying to crack down on securities. And he believes that there should be uh, more uh, things being done by the SEC as far as regulation. And uh, he really wants to put a clamp down. Well, if you kind of do that for him and go, okay, Gary, here's what we're gonna do, AML and KYC, that's a good step in the right direction just to put yourself out of the crosshairs just be like, look, man, if you want that, we already did it. And here it is. You didn't have to ask for it. We did it for you. So when I take a look at this, I go, uh, Acuant, that's a pretty good step as far as prevention. So that's uh, what's going on. And then I just want to just give you a quick snippet about what's coming up. Just take a listen uh, to this uh, quick 45-second uh, video or so. Welcome back to day two of the Cardano Summit 2021. Now, we had an amazing day yesterday with announcements from Dish and Boost Mobile, bringing millions of their customers into the Cardano ecosystem. And we heard from Chainlink, a quant, very tree, rival esports, straight brands, and a Tala scan, plus a new $6 million Africa fund to boost development in the region. We just kicked things off here with another groundbreaking announcement, an exciting new partnership with Oasis Pro to create a platform to help developing nations access overseas capital and bridge the investment gap. Later today, we'll learn more about Cardano certification, working with industry experts on new standards for the DeFi ecosystem. We'll also announce a new industry-leading strategic alliance. So stay tuned for that. I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. So uh, as soon as I figure out what they're talking about as far as that strategic alliance, I will let everybody know. But on top of that, I just want to make mention of this 
snippet, this this video that was put out. This was Charles and the folks from uh, Dish and from Boost Mobile, and they went over really it's four things about the different uh, partnership between Dish and Boost Mobile and Cardano and how those all came about. So the first thing I want to talk about is we're going to have uh, Cardano or ADA ADA talk about pretty much how things are moving and progressing, uh, interoperability. And when you listen to this, just think about the things that actually could be. I think that's it's important to get the vision first. Yeah, from my standpoint, from a commercial perspective, I, I find Metcalf's law comes into play here. So we've got a, a big network, which is the telecom network. We've got the blockchain network. And as we know, the value of a network is the square of the users of the connections. So it just makes sense that networks work together. That's kind of from my, from my perspective. And we see it in the market that we see this, this push towards networks working together. Interoperability is a big thing in our industry. And I think it's only going to grow from here. Yeah, and one of the core goals of blockchain is about empowering the edges. And it's kind of funny to think of a, a Fortune 250 company as being on the edges. But in many cases, the way the legacy economy is working, that happens. Uh, whether you're dish or a small business, in some cases, you're at the mercy of the legacy banking system. You're at the mercy of a lot of older regulations and older legacy business models or monopolies or other things that you just have to accept as a fact of life. And this becomes an enormous cost center and ultimately deteriorates the quality of the product and reduces the overall profitability of the enterprise. So the same types of things we're trying to do to transform the life of someone in Senegal or Ethiopia or Tanzania, Zanzibar at the very individual level, the, the farmer, uh, the small business owner, the, the university graduate, we actually try to do to transform the institution, the business. And we're really excited about how can blockchain technology be used for a client like Dish to actually allow them to take back some of their autonomy and power. So that kind of sets it up for what it actually could be and what they're trying to do. So really, when we're going to get into it, we're going to start to talk more about uh, digital IDs and how and what Charles talked about there is like the old world thinking and how everything's kind of fragmented and how they plan to like keep it under one umbrella. So the next thing that he's going to talk about, and I think it's a good point. It's one of my criticisms I've had for Cardano for quite some time is that they move pretty slow. And they move pretty slow, and that's okay because we don't want to have them break too many things. And uh, but now that things are being have been built there's a solid foundation now it's time to really pick up the pace and what charles talks about here is that his feet are actually being uh held to the fire by these big companies that are coming in such as dish and boost just take a listen and we've thought about identity very differently as a consequence and it's forced us as a company to actually really put the consumer front center we're so obsessed with writing scientific papers and all this formal methods code and these things. Sometimes you can forget that there's actual human beings at the other side of it. And what I love about working with Chris and Steve is that they, they always remind us of that. Like, what's the product? What's the vision? What's the consumer experience? How is this going to benefit the consumer and uh, so forth? And also, how do we get this to market quickly? Not five years, not 10 years, but how can we iterate and get it in now? And where can that happen? And that's the big thing. Like, look, Cardano, they have they have no shortage of brain power over there, uh, and they take a lot longer to do things. But now that again, like they have everything built, now it's time to really. Uh, this is where the rubber meets the road and really need to start pushing out things. So I'm glad they partnered up with 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 a group, uh, with a Fortune 250 company. That says, look, this is great, but now let's let's start producing, let's start moving, let's start having some action. And this, I think, is where things start to accelerate. So uh, there's that part. But then the next question really comes down to like why telecommunications why pick a mobile phone provider it doesn't make much sense so just take a listen steven yeah and it's not just the technology that's been impressive about charles and team uh yourself included uh it's the focus on the consumer when we kind of came in and took over boost a year ago it was really looking at the telecom space from a different perspective right now if you look at the consumer wireless uh customer they're bombarded with i've got the fastest network and i'm five bucks cheaper and that's the messaging charles and team kind of share the same sort of view as us. We kind of look at it at how can we really deliver a deeper value to the consumer? How can we connect the consumer across a broader set of services, more lubricated way? How can we bring new digital services to the consumer? How can we actually give an underserved, underbanked population access to banking services, cryptocurrency? You know, it, Bitcoin is the number two most searched term on Google right now, yet if you look at the actual data, there's still under 15% that actually have ever even opened. So yeah, that was one of the heads of Dish and, and Boost Mobile, and he pretty much just lays it out right there. He's like, look, 
Uh, we need to do this thing so we can actually, we're all the same thing as far as telecommunications go, okay? We can only give them so much discounts. We can only say that we're the the fastest 5G network. What's the next step? And this is where it's going to bring them in. Because Boost Mobile, I believe, is losing out to like a Verizon and uh, those, those bigger types of players. So they need to figure out like what is the next step. And this, I think, is the next step. And if you notice one thing that he said there, he said it's about bringing this, these telecommunications, these services to... Uh, industrial nations or to uh, you know emerging nations so when we talk about like with with boost mobile boost mobile is pretty much focused on first world countries you know big types of players and, and whatnot and later on they, they talked about they talk about world mobile token which is what, one of the ones that i'm an ambassador with and i can tell you again if we go back uh, to that link or take a look at the actual global wealth pyramid Cardano is going for everything in just in the telecommunications sector. And then you just heard uh, the, the other gentleman from Cardano talk about, we're trying to bridge the gap between Africa and other uh, uh, first world countries as far as it goes for like uh, finance. So again, taking everything, and of course, again, Cardano is also with, with uh, a lot of the first world countries, really just going for everything. So even if you don't hit everybody up here in the top 1%, or the 10% and 30%, let's just say like you're down here and you get like, you know, you have 6.2 trillion. Let's just say you get, I don't know, 50% of that. That's pretty good. 3 trillion, not too bad, nothing to sneeze at. As you connect everybody else, you do well and do good. So again, I think it's a, it's a pretty uh, great plan. So then lastly, uh, just to finish up, the big question to me is like, how do digital IDs, what is it and how does it all fit in? Because it doesn't make much sense. Okay, so we have cryptocurrency, we have digital assets, we have it on the phone. What do I do with that besides make payments? Because that's the only thing I really, you know, have really thought about for the longest of time. So take a listen to what digital IDs can do and how it plays into the whole ecosystem. All right, Charles. Yeah, you know, it's uh, identity is such a fundamentally human thing. And it's amazing that we haven't as a as a collective global society figured out this problem yet. You know, uh, you know, we have passports, we have driver's licenses, we have paper identity. We have some notions of digital identity, but right now digital identity is a very fragmented affair. Your digital identity you use to register to vote is distinctly different than how you manage your medical records from how you manage your personally identifiable information with regulated financial institutions. And even the people you would think would get it right about safety, security, privacy, have gotten it horrifically wrong. I think one of the biggest moments in US history was the OPM hack, the Office of Personnel Management. There, you have a database that contains the names and information of all the people who applied for and got security clearances. So our spies, our generals, our military, deeply personal information about them, their relationships, other things, held by a very secret government agency, it gets hacked and 22 million files have been lost since the 1970s. If that kind of agency has difficulty keeping data secure, it's unrealistic to assume that Fortune 500 small businesses, individuals are going to be able to do that in the old paradigm. So you need to change the paradigm a little bit and push power to the edges and put the consumer front and center with their digital life. So there's a lot to unpack there, but think of it this way. Let's just say, well, let, let, let me back up. How many times have you gotten a letter, an email, a notification that your personal information has been hacked? So let's just say, you know, whatever else it is on all the different uh, platforms, social media platforms, um, financial platforms that just say, oh, sorry, you know, we, you know, we, we got hacked. And that's what it is. Not that it's like everybody's fault. I'm just saying how many times has that happened? It's like a commonplace type of thing. So the reason is because your data is held in a very centralized place. It's in one computer or a group of computers that can be hacked quite easily. Now, take that to a decentralized identification. Your identification doesn't live in one computer. It doesn't live in 10 computers. Let's just say it, it, it lives in, in multiple, multiple uh, networks that to actually be able to hack, you would have to uh, hack the entire network to get that data. So it's like you have to hack one computer or 10 computers, you have to hack well, 51% of them or more to actually get the information out of that entire uh, network. So that is just one thing like, well, that would be pretty great. And then on top of that, like think about things for like, for like voting. How good would that be? Voter suppression, all those things. We actually vote in this way. We can take back the ID that we actually have. And then if you think about like other ways in which we can do things, it actually makes a lot of sense. And then think of it also this way. 
if you have your digital ID in one place, then you have your dApps also coming in. So then everything that you want is in one decentralized place and then, and then then dApps can come into and just kind of work with it like what's being done with uh, dish like what's being done with boost it reminds me a lot of what amazon did as far as e-commerce instead of going to multiple multiple e-commerce places everybody just goes to one hub and they say okay here's amazon i just want to shop there i want a toothbrush i want a sofa and i want a tire and i want all those things and i'm only in one place very simple instead of going to three different places i just go right here and it's very simple and it's very easy. And guess what? It's very cheap to do. It's a lot cheaper than going to a lot of places. So let that kind of sink in about what they're doing, which leads me to my next point. And it talks about 20, 20 million new customers. And this is the website that they're talking about. As far as digital IDs, this is a, a Tala Prism, uh, powering the trust economy. I'm just going to go over a couple points. This video is going a little long. So if you, if you look at it in three different ways, as far as a digital ID, you got it for businesses, governments, and the individual. I think right now, if we're kind of looking at what does this do for us, as an individual, you become the sole owner of your ID. You're in charge of your data. You can manage who can access your data. No more third parties snooping around. Uh, store all your important credentials like ID, licenses, or qualifications in one place. Instantly access a variety of services. No more forms, passwords, or hacks, or wasted time. Now, if you're uh, let's say you're a business, you can instantly onboard and authenticate your customers, reusable KYC credentials. And if you're a government, a verified digital identity for everyone, it means a significant reduction in fraud against all parties. So if you kind of see where things are going and where Cardano is trying to do things, well, it kind of makes a lot of sense is they're trying to get this whole darn pyramid. And this leads me to my last point. I'm going to link this uh, website at the very end. There's this cool little interactive city map and when you do this and you launch it you can actually go through all the different things we talked about as far as like an individual uh as far as like uh, a government uh, as far as like a business and you can go and see like how it all works in a um uh an interactive type of way and underneath here it says get your id no that's not it to go over here let me go out of here right here where it says download the app store when i click on that it's gonna bring me into the app store itself. Let me build this up so you can see it. And guess what? Here's the Atala Prism app, just ready and ready to go. You can just click on get, get your, and now we'll start to install that. Let me jump ahead. And as it actually has this going, own and share your data, connect to an organization, receive your credentials. That's pretty good. You can reset your data, government ID, university degree, proof of employment, health insurance, all that good stuff. Backup accounts, credentials, decentralization. Pretty cool. Let's click on open. Like to access the camera. Sure. The app needs the camera to scan the QR codes. Okay. Get started. Create account. I accept. I'll leave those later. Now it's going to say your seed phrase. I blocked it out, obviously, but this is where you're going to write that into your stone book or whatever else. Keep that safe because that is your entire ID right there. Great, and I verified the account just by putting a couple of seed phrases, or the uh, two two of them, and then that's it. So continue. Continue. You're going to scan QR code. So right here, where it says scan QR code, which means this is what it wants. It wants the QR code. Let me get this out of here. From here. And again, this is just to, just to show you how it all works out. You don't have to do this. This is you're pretty much done right there. But let's see. So to get your ID... Connect with the government to obtain your government ID, which is, this is just for funsies. Uh, open it at Teleprism, go to the notifications button and tap this QR code. So scan QR code. And as I scan that, it this comes up, Metropolitan City Government. Okay, confirm. And there it is, Metropolitan City Government. So then as time goes on and credentials are available in this way, we we'll click credentials, credentials, government ID. That's Joe Wong, that's the of course, that's the one from uh, this make-believe world, Joe Wong. Uh, full name, date of birth, ID number, expiration dates, and everything that is right there. And you can save that or send that to anybody, and you can work in a decentralized way. And what's great about this is that you don't have to give up anything if you don't want to. Now, I think there's always going to be human error, but that is a teleprism, uh, really, in a nutshell, and how you can do things. And then when I take a look at I think to myself, okay, well, where is this really all going to go? If I take a look, let me uh, get out of here.
And you're welcome to to uh, play with all this stuff uh, right here. Let me see. Let me get out of this. Select continue because I did that. You can do your. Oh, this is pretty cool. You can do your university degree. Get your degree. Oh, this is what it is. And then I'm gonna scan that. Let me put this on QR code. Let me get my degree. There it is. Confirm. And again, oh, and then you can share the following information to process. So you can share it with the government ID, share it with them. Successfully done. Ah, I get it. I get it. And you can just go back and forth. And there's your, there's your degree. Joe Wong, Bachelor of Science, blah, blah, blah. Let's do the next one. This is pretty fun, actually. Get out of here. Let's do proof of employment. Oh, I did this. Continue. Proof of employment. Apply now. Again with the thingy. QR code. Let me bring this up. Bop, bop. Confirm. <laughs> the centralized ink. That's funny. And then, ah, share the following information to process your credentials. So like, yeah, so you want a job. Here's my ID. Here's my university degree because I'm getting a job, whatever it is. Share. And done. And you share right there. Congrats. You now receive your proof of employment. And then continue. I thought it'd be good. Let's try health insurance. Health insurance. Let's sign up for that. Again with the QR code. And then here. Scan that. Confirm. Let's see. Oops. Okay. And then of course your what's your insurance gonna usually ask for? ID and proof of insurance employment. Go. Gone. Done. Congrats. You have all the credentials. Blah, blah, blah. If you want to go through experience more than once, da, 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 da. All right. And that's it for that section. And then, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's how it works pretty much in a nutshell. And then lastly, I will just say this, like for all the different things that uh, you can potentially do this with, as far as like uh, use cases, just check this out. Here it is in a nutshell. Education, IDs, degrees, certificates, transcripts, government, uh, you got civic records, licenses, records, awards for your health, license certificates, health records, vaccinations, prescriptions. I know some people don't like that, but whatever. And then enterprise, job references, certificates, awards, loyalty programs, and invoices. And you have it all right there. So look, I know that was a very, a little bit longer than what we're used to, but there's a lot of information here. A lot of things are going on with Cardano. So that is it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Links will be in the description below. And that's it. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you in the next one.